Hi and happy Monday! Happy Monday everyone, glad you're here. Today, very excited, we are going to have a showdown between cube tanks and rectangle tanks. There may be some disagreement between us too. There's always <laughs> disagreement between us. And I think it's cool because cube tanks are like a thing now, right? You see a lot more yes. of them at least now than you used to in many years past. And so we're going to take a look at the 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 real details about whether or not a cube tank or a rectangle tank might be for you. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so if you are new here, you're old here, I'm just going to address a few comments that I've been seeing lately in the last, last month or so. Who am I? <laughs> who, who is she? Who am I? Well, on Mondays, I am Joanna. I'm his wife. He's, it's his channel, right? Your channel. But I drop by on Mondays to give a different side of fish keeping. Because I like, well, you're science and I'm art and you're big tanks. I'm nano tanks. And I like scaping. You like fish keeping. So it kind of gives a little more rounded you know, view of the a fish yang keeping. And a yin. Okay. Yes. Is that awesome. how you say it? Sure. Okay. So with that being said, you're only going to see me here on Mondays. And... Well, I'm leaving Primetime Aquatics, too. Wait, what? <laughs> well, actually, actually not, not really. You will probably still see me here on Mondays, okay. but I'm going to be having my own channel soon next month in September 2020. That I knew. <laughs> I'm going to have my own channel. I'm just going to let you know that it won't be a fish keeping channel. We have fish keeping stuff on there once in a while? Once in a while you will okay. have fish make guest appearances, but generally speaking, yes, you will see scaping in small ways, but not necessarily always in a fish tank. So I'm going to say more details to come in the next couple weeks, so stay tuned. All right, so to start out this showdown, where do you want to start? Looks? Looks. The Let's looks go category. with looks. Let's go with the looks. Okay. And like I said, there will be some minor differences of opinions based on I'm nano, he's larger tanks, etc., etc. Sure. All right. So first, viewing. Which one is better for viewing? So my personal feeling is if you're getting a cube tank, I like the viewing angles for a cube tank better. And that is you could potentially see all four sides of a cube tank, cube tank and it's it's... It can have a really, if it's got a really nice aquascape, all four sides are something that you can enjoy. Where with your standard rectangular tank that you would normally see like all the ones behind us, you really have one main viewing panel. Could you view it from other sides? Like maybe if you had it separating two rooms, you've got now two sided view, but really the ends of a rectangular tank, you're not primarily using those to enjoy your fish. Maybe some of you are, but for the most part a rectangle, you've got one viewing panel with the cube. You could have up to four, usually at least three. Now, one of the points that you said was better for a cube tank for this, which I found, I don't know, I'm using, was you said that a cube tank would be better in the center of a room. Relative to a rectangular tank, yes. But I find that funny because most people won't put a tank in the center of a room. I, unless you're like okay, green time aqua out, time or out. something. And you in the comments section below, <laughs> I want you to put whether or not you have put a cube tank in the center of a room or you would consider doing it. Right. And we're just going to go ahead. We're going to have to settle this thing because, yeah, it was yeah. just a natural thought. Like, wow, a cube tank would look better in the center of a room. I think that's a normal thought to have. In like an aquarium that you're going to visit or maybe in a fish room, like you have the, the low boy, but that's a rectangle. Okay. So Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, rimless. Yeah. Rimless. I'm going to say that a cube, you're more frequently going to see them for sale. Absolutely. I think sure. so. They're, they're everywhere. Yep. It's a modern design that's really trending. And I would say oh, with the cube tank, you're almost always going to have a rimless tank. I, in fact, I can't recall seeing a cube tank with a frame on the top and the bottom where your standard rectangular tanks, yes, they can be rimless as well. But when you start getting to those three, four, five foot tanks, maybe larger, that becomes a little bit more problematic. Not saying those tanks don't exist, they absolutely do. But with a rectangular tank, usually the standard ones, you're almost always gonna have a rim on the top and the bottom. Again, enough for me, mm -hmm. I don't really care. I, yeah. I guess I'm just used to having a normal looking tank since the 1970s, so oh, cool. I don't think anything of it. But You even you, have some wood grain. I even have some wood grain. Yeah, the 150 is a wood grain. I wanna paint that just here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, scaping options. This is 
this is where we have a difference of opinion too. And since I'm an expert in scaping and <laughs> do it all the time, you I bet. don't. You bet. Um, all right, so can I, you yeah, want to yeah. go first? Oh, you want me to? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. I, I think you're going to get more options most of the time with a rectangular tank because wrong well i for one thing for one well two two points one if you have a longer piece of driftwood you're better off with a rectangular tank okay okay also there are some designs i've done probably not too many but like the kitchen garden tank i have i have escape that's coming from both directions from the left and the right meeting in the middle you can't do that really in a cube tank and this is generally speaking but that was just my first thought rectangular is going to give you maybe more options see my thought was when you have a cube tank you again you have that visibility potentially from all four sides and at least three so as long as you scape it properly you're going to get a lot of interesting views from all those different angles with a rectangular tank obviously they're going to be much longer than they are wider and therefore you're not getting the quite the same depth of feel potentially correct but again you can add this to the things in the comments section. What would you prefer to aquascape? What do you prefer to look at if something is done well? Is it a rectangular tank like our standard tanks, like your 20 longs, your 125s, uh, and everything in between? Or would you prefer to see a well-scaped cube tank? Now you mentioned the world of design. This, this brings up another point that I like to throw in whenever I can. FYI, a principle of design for a calming sort of feel is usually a landscape picture a landscape viewing it's more calming to your mind i'm just saying okay okay footprint the footprint of the tank absolutely so footprint uh with the footprint of the tank it really kind of depends right it depends on what you want to do and where you want your tank yeah, so we, for instance mm-hmm mm -hmm, the rectangle <laughs> hold that thought the <laughs> The rectangular tank, I think the advantage you're gonna have is that it's pushed up against a wall. Yes. And that's good. However, the problem is going to be you might have a two, three, four, five, six foot long tank that's gonna be taking up a lot of wall <laughs> space. World. Yes, and you're looking at this from a different yes. perspective. So you're looking at it from a yeah. nano perspective where I'm yeah. thinking, and, and what we're thinking is, okay, let's say you've got a 20 gallon tank. If it's, a, if it's a 20 long, you've got a 30 inch tank. But if you had a 20 cube, it's not going to be 30 inches long. It might only be 18 by 18. I'm just throwing out numbers, but maybe 18 by 18 by something tall, right? Maybe all the, you get what I'm saying. So it's a cube. So anyway, longer, well longer against the wall. Uh, it's going to be pushed up against the wall, but your perspective was a little different. Right, because I like nano tanks and I'm always thinking, where can I put a nano tank? Like the two and a half gallon tanks, uh, which actually is a rectangle, but a cube tank is going to take up less of a footprint, i.e. next to my workspace where Clear Bob hangs out and is my coworker. It's a very small footprint. And that is a really good point. So if you're putting something on a dresser or a desk, maybe a standard size tank isn't going to be the best in terms of taking up your desk space or your dresser space. So mm -hmm. cube might work out better there. Mm -hmm. The rectangular tank, you're going to get a whole lot more options of sizes. You've got like our 12 gallon long, you've got the two and a half gallons, you've got the low boys, which I wish they made way more smaller low boys. Yeah. And the 2.3 gallon. 2 .3, so yeah, the rectangular yeah. tanks, that's a good point. You're, they're starting to get very interesting sizes yeah. and it's cubes as well, but it's still a cube where the, the rectangular tanks are yeah. really starting to make them longer a little bit more shallow, a little bit more narrow, which is pretty interesting. You, you brought up a good point for looks for a rectangular tank. It's going to look larger. That is absolutely true. And Quite that's possibly, one of the, yeah. you know, we've talked about, by the way, we've done videos on comparing all kinds of different tank sizes. I'll put those in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. But like, well, even when we compared like the 55 versus the 75, uh, one of the reasons why people like 55 gallon tanks, even when we compare the 55 to the 40 gallon breeders, you've got four feet long. And you've got that big viewing panel, which is yeah, pretty cool for the, most of the rectangular tanks. So, you know, when we're talking about the look of a tank, that large viewing panel really is pretty awesome compared to a cube tank where you might have a much smaller viewing panel. Mm -hmm. And you can really see them trucking along the little fish, you know, from side to side, like in my 12 gallon when I watch my little pea puffers. Absolutely. Super fun. Mm -hmm. Like little. This is probably more me than you. Just 
just guessing, okay, the last little point under looks is that the cute tank is, I think, more modern. It's more trending. It's very simple. It's very, uh, blends into a lot of decors. It just, it's very modern. Absolutely, yeah. I would say right now, I would agree with that statement 100%. Mm. For our next category, the occupants. The fish, the snails, the shrimp, the living inhabitants of your tank. What say you? Horizontal swim space. That's, okay, <laughs> done. Uh, yeah, so when it comes to what fish actually use, it's the side to side of the tank, not so much the vertical. So when you have a rectangular tank, it's a longer tank, they have more space to swim. You're losing that in a cube tank to a large degree. So that would be one important thing. So that might be an advantage for your standard size rectangular tank, like your 20 gallons, your 10 gallons, your 20 longs, your 29s, your 40 breeders, your 55s, your 75s, your 90s, your 125s, your 150s, your 180s, and so forth. I'm oh, sure I left out a bunch. You probably anyway, did, like of the small nano world. There's something else to consider too when it comes to your occupants. And we keep a fair amount of cichlids in our fish room. If some of you have been watching for a long time, you know that. And that's where the horizontal swimming space, that footprint at the bottom of the tank becomes super important. Cichlids like to be territorial. They mm -hmm. like their own spaces. And therefore, the more you can spread them out, the more success you're gonna have. Generally speaking, I would say a cube tank is not the best tank to have cichlids relative to a rectangular tank if all the stocking options are the same. Stocking options, kind of related. Oh, okay, right yeah, into it. Right. Stocking options, what do you think? Well, I'm thinking you're, it's just a hunch, you're gonna have way more stocking options with a rectangular tank. You are gonna have more with a rectangular tank. Again, just because of what I said, with the footprint and the horizontal swimming space, maybe you get a little bit more with the cube for the vertical if you wanna set in the layers, if the tank size all being equal. But yeah, the, the rectangular tank are gonna give you more options and potentially more success depending on how you stock your tank. Next category is maintenance. What do you think? Because you've got both sizes, so I, I do. don't have... And I don't have I, workers I don't, like you do. Yeah, and I don't maintain any me. cube tanks, so what do we think? <laughs> I previously would have thought, one way or another, that one would have been better, but I really don't think it matters as much. It's based more on what your scape is and how much different, how many different items you have put in that tank. I have really done a number on some of my tanks where I've created a whole lot more work for myself just based on how many different intertwined pieces of driftwood and spider wood and rocks and, and all that. I don't see a, really a difference in, even if, if the footprint is slightly larger or smaller, we're talking a nano tank, so gravel vacuuming a smaller versus a larger, uh, a rectangular versus a cube tank doesn't really. And I think maybe the one thing to consider is if you're getting into the larger cubes and rectangles, the maintenance might be a little bit more challenging on the cube only because it's going to be taller. And so if you've got short arms, if you're like little T-Rex arms, that might be difficult to reach the bottom of the tank. Maybe you're doing some aquascaping, trying to get some plants uh, yeah. into the substrate. You might need a slightly longer uh, gravel vac. But for the most part, yeah, I would say the overall maintenance is going to be very similar. How about for filtration? Filtration is interesting in that so for us, whenever we get a tank that's three feet or over, usually we're beginning, for a rectangular tank, for a standard size tank, we're usually looking at two filters, whether that's two smaller hang in the back filters or two sponge filters. So in that respect, depending on the size of the tank, you may have additional challenges with that longer rectangular tank if you're going over three feet. If you're under three feet, I think maybe it's a little bit more difficult for the cube only because the cube's probably going to be a little bit taller and you wanna make sure that your intake, if you've got a hang on the back filter, is going down far enough so that you can get the water circulation and the water flow that you want. So I would say for the most part, it's not drastically different until you get to the larger sizes. Even my 12 gallon is, is three feet long and I need two sponge filters. Right. Mm -hmm. Which sometimes one of the filters doesn't wanna run. That's a sad story. It is. For our last category, cost. The money. Yes. Which one would you say is cheaper? I would say for sure the rectangular tanks are cheaper for a lot of reasons. One, mm -hmm. we've talked about buying kit tanks, you know, where you get the starter kits. I'll put that in the upper right hand corner. It's an older video, but we went over all the advantages of having one of those kits. 
Yes, you can find them for a cube, right? Yeah. I think we, you've bought, we've gotten some that are an all-in-one, sure. but for the most part, your rectangular tanks are going to be cheaper. One because they come in kits more frequently. They're not uh, rimless. They are not rimless, uh, which can make a difference as well. Uh, they're just more common, so there's more to cost than just the initial setup of the tank, too, right? I mean, we've got to deal with the lights, and so if, if your tank, your cube tank doesn't come with a light, now you've got to try to figure out, okay, what light can I use to fit the cube tank, which might be a, a little bit of more of an odd size, but for almost all your standard rectangular tanks, again, your 10s, your 20s, your 29s, that kind of tank, it's very easy to find lights. It's very easy to find filtration. It's very easy lids. to find lids, which, yeah, for us, it's not a huge problem because we'll use the polycarbonate lids and that works out okay for us. But if you're looking for glass and you've got a rimless tank, that might be a little bit of a challenge. So for the standard rectangular tanks, your lids are gonna be easier to find as are your stands. So uh, if you're looking for, if you've got a larger tank and you need to put it on a stand, the rectangular ones are gonna be far, far easier to find. One last point before we're done here. Except for the nano tanks that are cubes, you can go to the dollar store and get a frame, like a 12 by 12 frame. Just take the glass out. There you go. For a buck, you have a lid. All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gives you something to think about. Would love to hear from you once again in the comments section below. What are your thoughts? By the way, if you want to see a really cool playlist on fish tank sizes that we've compared, pros and cons, check out, we're going to put the video right here. Uh, check out that playlist. I think it'll be helpful. And yeah. And remember, check out my new channel, which will give you more details very soon. And hope we'll see you there too. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye.